given your experiences as an American living overseas and working with affluent foreign families for many, many years, and that now the convergence more so of potentially the model of the VFO, what do you look at for international families as being a advantage and or a disadvantage as well to the virtual family office model? Well, some of the, um, many of the families I've worked with uh, in Russia and the Middle East, where I spent um, you know, a good part of the last 25 years, 10 years in Russia and five years in and out of the, out of the Middle East. Um, what I found in terms of the advantages of a family office offering to these, to these groups, uh, to these families, um, and in some ways I operated as a virtual family office, albeit I was on in some, in some instances on a very large platform, um, I became a confidant of, of a number of the families I worked with. Um, I, I think there are at least three elements that particularly for the foreign families are most important. One, which is, um, which is true in the U.S. as well, but in a different way, is one of culture. Okay, um, A family in um, the Middle East, a family in Asia, a family in Russia, they're all very different. They're culturally different, and it requires a much, a much more nuanced approach in terms of how do they operate and how do they look to see to make decisions. Um, the second is, is privacy, and all families want privacy and confidentiality. But what I discovered, particularly in um, my overseas adventures, was that families don't necessarily want to trust people from their own region. Um, and there can be a variety of reasons for that. One, um, it may be that, uh, that they don't want to have too much information, particularly financial and tax information, um, leaking back to the tax authorities because it's much more um, porous in some emerging market countries than it would be, say, here in the U.S. Um, and so they weren't necessarily enamored with the idea of speaking with advisors who were sitting in their home country. They would rather rely on advisors who were sitting, say, in London or Zurich or, or New York, uh, as opposed to their home country. Um, the last, or one of the last advantages, I think, for a virtual family office in an emerging market country would be something that you know you and I wrote about several years ago when I was still based in Moscow, and that's political risk. Um, not a lot of families in the U.S. would call me up and ask me for my opinions about political risk, although perhaps in today's environment that might be slightly more topical. Um, but in the Middle East, in Russia, in many countries in Latin America and Asia, political risk is a, is a huge consideration. Um, and they want people's advice as to how do they, particularly with their investment portfolios, as to how do they layer it in such a way to minimize their political risk of nationalized, companies being nationalized or governments seizing assets, et cetera. Um, so those are three of the biggest advantages for foreign families. Um, some of the disadvantages, I guess some of those can be turned on their head and become disadvantages as well, that um, yes, privacy is very important, but you can carry it to an nth degree and, and, and suffer from, from, if you will, groupthink, that you don't get any advice and therefore you don't know exactly what's going on in the outside world. Um, but really it's, it's, I think, privacy, political risk, and culture, I think, are the biggest advantages. And depending on how it's rolled out, can become terrific advantages or can have some speed bumps along the way.